Hey y'all, we are here for another video in the OBS series. And today we are going to talk about scenes and also how to add a video to loop and music sources. So let's get started. We are back on the landing page. And as you see, you see scene already in there. Of course, the scenes module is there and then you see a scene. Now that is or already added in OBS. Of course, there's actually nothing in the scene, but that's just the way OBS does it. But what I wanted to show you is how to actually add a scene. Now, what is a scene? A scene is just like in a movie. Um, you know, you've got your different parts. To add a scene, you'll want to click the button at the bottom. And this is what pops up in the middle of the screen. Scene two, of course, because scene one's already in there. I want to change the name. So name it what you want. We're going to call it video loop. And as you can see, video loop has been added to the scene. However, we've got to get the actual video that we're going to loop into OBS. And that is where the sources come in. So we go to the bottom and you find the plus sign there. Add is only either a media source or VLC. Those are the two things, uh, sources that you use when you want to add media files and those media files being music or uh, actual video. But we are going to use media source to add our single video because we're only using one video. And of course, once you uh, click that, you get the create select media source. And I want to change the name to something that I know what it is. And we're going to call it video loop. Okay. And we want to click OK. And as you can see, oops, the name is already in use. OBS does not let you have the same name. Uh, you know, you can't have the same name for a scene and, and a source or two scenes or two sources. So what you'll want to do is, you know, click OK to get that box out of the way. And then add a one or an A, B or something to that name and it will accept that. Okay, now the um, properties box for the video loop uh, scene, video loop one source comes up and uh, you'll want to make sure that the local file box is checked. It should be checked automatically because the media source only works with local files, local file meaning a file located on your computer. Computer or external drive, any drives that might be connected to your machine. So you want to make sure that that's checked because, of course, we do have accidental clicks. You know, stuff gets unchecked accidentally. Uh, then you want to browse. And here's my folder. And we're going to choose the file. We want to make sure that the loop box is checked. Restart playback when source becomes active. That is automatically checked. We want to make sure that that remains checked. So that anytime you switch scenes, it will automatically um, replay once you come back to this scene. Okay. Use hardware decoding when available. Um, that one is pretty good if you, um, if your machine is, you know, a little bit on the, I guess you say weaker side. Otherwise, you probably don't need that checked. I go ahead and check it for mine. And then the next one, show nothing when playback ends. 
that is checked automatically. So you'll want to uncheck that. Otherwise, you're going to get that black screen once the uh, video ends. Close file when inactive. Now that is it closes the file when the source is not being displayed on the stream or in the recording unchecked then it remains in the ram uh, when it's checked it when, um, takes it out of the ram when the source is not being used so that's kind of uh, important if you don't have a whole lot of ram you know in your uh, in your machine if you do you may not need that check I go ahead and check it anyway. Now you have the speed. If you want it slower, you can slide that slider to the left. If you want it faster, slide the slider to the right. Or you can adjust it up and down with the arrows or actually put the percentage in there you want. Color range. The default is auto. If you want it to partial or full, change it to either one of those. I like mine at full and then hit OK. OK, we are back now and it is playing and looping. As you can see, you can uh, see it playing. There's the pause button. You can actually pause it, start it back. You see that it is playing and um, all the way over to the right, you see those numbers. That's the first one is how long it's been playing. The second one is how much time is left in the source. As you can see, there is no audio in this particular video track, but if there were, you would see it there. And of course, when you add a media source, now the audio mixer has been populated. You don't, I didn't have to do anything to get that there. But what you want to do is um, if there is audio in your track um, you'll want to slide that slider all the way oh uh, maybe about halfway three quarters of the way to uh, keep the uh, thing out of the red and you'll see that later when we actually add music but if you do have sound in there you'll want to click the gear so that you can hear it and click advanced audio properties. You get that and then you'll want to click the monitor where it says audio monitoring. You want to click it to monitor and output. That way you can hear it. You'll, you'll be hearing what what your viewers were here. If you want to monitor it but do not want the audio to go out, then you'll choose monitor only mute output. Okay, and then hit close. And what we're going to do now is add some uh, music track. So of course, hit the plus button. And we're going to add just a single track. So we're going to go use media source again. Media source can be used for either audio, single audio or single video uh, media. And of course, you get the media, uh, you know, create media. And we're going to change the name and I'm going to change it to music single. Make sure that make source visible is checked and then hit OK. And then you get, you know, that same menu that we got before. We're going to check our, or pick our music file. We want to loop it. Make sure the restarts checked. Make sure the use hardware decoding is checked. Uncheck the show nothing playback. Close the file when inactive. And of course, the speed at 100 don't need to change the color. Hit OK. Check everything first. And then hit OK. 
And as you can see, we have music playing. Now, of course, you're not going to hear it because of the way I am recording this um, so that you could actually see it. But yes, you know the, the music is playing because you see the, uh, the graph there. Now, you see how that music is going into the red? It's too loud. Um, it's going to sound distorted and not good at all. So make sure you hit that slider back to get your audio um, within the yellow range. You can, you know, have the yellow just butting up against the uh, red and that is perfect. Okay, and again, in order for you to hear it, click the gear, advanced audio properties. You see, you got the video loop still there and now your music single has been added. So turn that to video output. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that the video, uh, the visual is muted. So we're going to mute it from here as well. As a double precaution, we're going to mute it because you can also mute it by clicking on the little speaker icon and turning it red. And there is your single music track, which will loop for as long as you stream. Now, we're at going to add multiple tracks so that you would want to use VLC video source in order to add multiple tracks. Change the name if you want, leave it the same. I'm going to change it to music playlist. <laughs> Even though it's not really a music playlist, but that's what we're going to put in there. Music playlist. Make source visible. Make sure that's checked. Hit OK. And of course, loop playlist may or may not be checked, but you make sure that it, that it is if you want to loop it. If you want to shuffle it, you can. If you do, make sure it's checked. Visibility behavior, stop when not visible, restart when visible. or pause when not visible, unpause when visible. That's the one you probably want to use because um, if you have to go away from the scene for some reason and then come back to it, it will just restart where you left off versus the first one, uh, the stop when visible, will restart from the beginning. Now, always play. That'll be good for, I guess, if you're running music all throughout, you know, out while you're talking or something. So that's the one we're going to choose. Now we're going to add our files. So hit the plus sign, add files, and I add them one at a time. I'm going to choose those other, uh, one other one that I haven't already put in and add my second file. Leave everything down there the same as is, and then hit OK. And as you can see, the second, the playlist has now been added. Now, both of these tracks are playing because you see the, um, the graph, you know, the musical graph moving again. Anytime you add a new one, the volume is going to be all the way up. So make sure that you put that uh, volume down, which means you need to start your um, source so that you can do that uh, before you actually hit go or, you know, to stream. And for a playlist, it's probably pretty good to put it about in the middle um, because all of your audio tracks, of course, are not always going to have the same you know, the same volume unless, unless you've already, you know, done some audio editing to take care of that. You can also stop it by closing the eye. You see that little eyeball? That is how you uh, do a music, uh, a video and music loop in OBS. So I hope that that was helpful. 
and we will see you all next time.